Good morning. Thank you for being here. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. I did. I did, and I got to really think a lot about uh, what I'm thankful for. Um, you know, in the Science of Mind teaching, we believe that you have the capacity to heal spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And so today is one of those days where you get a lot of bang for your buck. For a very simple idea, this can make the biggest difference in your life. And I loved hearing what Fern and Jay had to say because they have 50 years of experience in the teaching knowing that the teaching makes a difference in your life. So I'm going to talk a little bit about thanks and why thanks is so important. And part of this is because it's relevant to our healing spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Look, I get it. Everybody wants to be happy, don't we? I mean, all of us, we want to be happy. I certainly do. And when I think about it, it's probably so that if there are 8 billion people on the planet, there's 8 billion different ideas about what happiness is, right? For, for every person, it's, it's, it's probably a little bit different. Um, People say when you're happy, you're grateful, but I think it's the other way. I believe that if we will make the effort to be grateful, we will find we have more and more and more in our life to be happy about. In the Bible, it says, to a grateful heart, much is given. To a grateful heart, much is given. Not, I'm going to wait till much is given, and then maybe I'll dig up a grateful heart. That is absolutely not how it goes. Um, I've even looked and seen often that people who seem to have, um, have it all want something else than what they have. And that's really, really curious to me. I've also, so that's over here. And then over here, I've seen people who have enormous difficulty in their life. It seems like they have one challenge after another after another. And you probably know these people too. And yet they remain optimistic. They're grateful, they're happy, and I think, wow, how do they do that? I want what they have. And I think what they have is an awareness of the transformative power of thanksgiving. Gratitude will make you happy. And you know, when you're happy, you're just a much more peaceful customer in the universe. And it's so much easier for the universe to give all manner of good to you because you're a content customer in the plan. You know, can can I really, really live my life grateful? I mean, I'm not, I don't like everything that happens, okay? So let me say that right up front. First of all, it's not like everything that happens is something that's just so terrific. Clearly, it's not. But can I live my life gratefully? I think the answer is yes, yes. If I could become aware that every moment, really like this moment we're in right now, every moment has a little gift for us, or maybe a large gift for us. This moment is a gift, right? And so it contains all kinds of opportunity for each and every one of us. The gift within is actually the gift, right? So can I be grateful in this moment? And I think since I've been working on this, I've noticed that if I'm aware of it, I, I can be. If I'm aware of it, I can choose it, to be grateful. So one of the things I say here at church all the time is that gratitude is the anointing of increase. And what I mean by that is the more grateful you are, the more you pave the way for the universe to bring greater good into your life. When we're not grateful, or I would say what I'm not grateful for are things like, you know, when I see... Uh, violence and tragedy and loss and all that that I think everybody would probably agree with. And when I see that we are confronted with a difficulty, though, we have the capacity to rise to the occasion of what is given to us. You know, perhaps we miss the opportunity in a situation because we don't feel grateful. I know for myself, I have so often resisted situations just wanting to pray the situation away rather than saying, is there anything good in this for me? Is there anything of value here? Is there anything here that I'm supposed to learn or glean from this? I was thinking about, because uh, I saw, I was out walking my dog, which where most transformation happens for me. I'm out with the dog a lot. And I saw, um, a woman with her two children, a little boy and a little girl, 
and they were getting ready to cross the street. And the mother had all this instruction before they crossed the street, right? But what was the most important instruction was the first to stop, right? It's like when you go to London and you look on the, on the ground on the sidewalks and it says, look, and you have to look right and look left, you know, otherwise you will be run over. So she's talking to her little kids and she's saying, okay, now well, the first thing we have to do is we have to stop. Everybody stop. And she made a big production with the little kids. It was so cute. She said, okay, now we look right and we look left and we look right and we look left again. So stop and then look and then they could proceed, right? So that all seems very, very simple. But I thought, well, that, that's actually how, how it goes, that we have to stop and look and then proceed. So when we proceed, that means to go, to do something. You know, what, what's life offering us in, in this moment? Well, I think when we're grateful, we're not fearful. When we're grateful, we're not being critical. When we're grateful, there's nothing of a, a, a violent uh, nature within us. Grateful, I think we act out of a sense of enough as opposed to acting out of a sense of scarcity. You know, when you feel like you lack, it's, it's, it's hard to be grateful. But if you can be grateful, the universe says, oh my God, this is not a person of lack. This is a person of substance. And grateful, I think we enjoy our differences. We have a greater capacity to respect and appreciate everybody when we're grateful. See, I think grateful people, for the most part, are pretty happy people. I think they're joyous people. You know, a grateful world would be a really happy world. I think, hmm, I'd like to really try that. See, when I'm truly grateful, when I'm truly, truly grateful, I think that, that joy has been like accessed from a deep place within me, almost like a wellspring, you know, and I've, and I've touched into that. Um, studies show that if you have a gratitude practice or an exercise that you do, it will make you happier. It will also make you healthier. This is why I say you get a lot of bang for your buck with gratitude. You really do. It has enormous, enormous benefits. You will be happier and you will be healthier if you practice, have a gratitude practice. Because gratitude um, frees us from spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical pain. So if you want to feel happier in life, then choose to be grateful. We think this can't be that big a deal. Can he keep talking about gratitude? Can this really make that much of a difference? And the answer is yes. You know, the enlightened masters who have come onto the planet go back, go all the way back. You know, Aristotle and Moses and Buddha and Jesus and on and on and on. They did not come and teach something that you had to have multiple PhDs to understand. They came and taught a very simple truth, which if we applied that truth consistently, consistently, it would transform, it would heal our lives. And that's exactly what this does. Now, I want to add a piece here that I think in addition to um, being grateful and speaking words of gratitude, I think we have to capture the feeling because feeling is part of the science of mind teaching. You, how you say, well, I don't feel very grateful about this. But if I did feel grateful, how would I feel? Oh, okay, let me try to get a hold of that. Let me try to catch that feeling. If it had already, if my healing had already happened, if that job had already come, if that deposit had already hit my bank account, how would I feel? I would feel grateful. All right, so let me have some of that. Mm -hmm. um, we can restructure our physical brain. You know, because we, we tap into the neuro, what's called the neuroplasticity of the brain, and we use our minds to create better brain cell connections. This is what gratitude does. When we're grateful again and again and again, it makes better brain cell connections. That couldn't possibly be a bad thing. And this is a do it daily. It's not a do it when I feel like it. It's not a do it when I have nothing else to do. It's a do it daily because that's why it's a discipline, right? It's a discipline so that when we need it, it's already there for us. We don't have to think about it. So yes, we can use our gratitude to heal our wounds. You know, I, I was thinking about this, that you know, as children, small children um, 
are vulnerable, right? We understand that. And as children, though, scientifically, our prefrontal cortex is not fully developed, this part of the brain. It's the last part of the brain to develop, and so it's not actually fully formed until we're about 20 years old. So as children, what happens is that negative information slips easily into the brain. You know, it just, it just goes in unfiltered. But the more emotionally charged those messages are, the more they stick in our subconscious or ub unconscious mind. And, and in turn, they become limiting beliefs and limiting ideas, and they hold us back, and they keep us small. All right, we get that. So the important thing is, is that gratitude will free us from old limiting beliefs. But again, gratitude on a consistent basis. Gratitude on a consistent basis. You know, dwelling in the negative reinforces the negative. Don't people understand that? We all have these negative people in our life. I know we do. And I want to shake them sometimes out of love. I mean this out of love. I really do. But I want to say, don't you realize how your being so negative is keeping you in the weeds? You know, it's just keeping you in deep, deep mushrooms. That's what it's keeping you in. Dwelling on the negative just reinforces those negatives. And so what we have to do is say, I, and I think there's a couple things. You can speak it out loud and say, I am grateful for, I am grateful to live here. I think we live in the promised land, don't you? I think this is the greatest place in the world. There is no place else I'd rather be. I love it here. I say all the time, I am the poster child for Southern California because I love it. And I'm sorry, the people who don't like it, I'm sure there are vacant states elsewhere. You should go there. Yeah, you should go there and make room on the freeways for us who love it here, because I love it here. I do, I do, I do. I like that I can go have Ethiopian food for breakfast and Indian food for lunch, and I can hear music from the other side of the world. We live in the greatest place, don't we? I mean, oh my God, this is the melting pot of, I love Los Angeles, I do. People disrespect Los Angeles all the time. And really, I think they should just go somewhere else. I do, because I love it here. I don't know what they're complaining about. Okay, so there's a little traffic. So, you know, I don't care where you go, there's something, right? And so, I make the best of the traffic, you know? When I'm in my car, I can practice gratitude. I sing God's the love that I am. I do so much affirming and treating when I am in the car. I get out of the car and I feel good. I see other people get out of the car and they're so stressed in the parking lot. I get out of the car and I'm high because I've been affirming and treating the whole time. It's like, wh why are people so upset? Why are people so worked up about things? See, so say what you're grateful for out loud. That is really, really important. I think, I think it's important to speak words of truth out loud. So here's the principle involved. The principle is that your soul loves to hear words of truth, and it most loves to hear the words of truth coming from your lips. Yeah, that response is like, oh, this must be really important. He's saying it himself. You know, my mood, my thoughts, my beliefs, they all improve when I'm grateful. Isn't that amazing to think about how everything gets better when we're grateful? So today, again, I'm talking about this neuroplasticity because this is fascinating to me. It reveals how a consistent gratitude practice will remap the connections of our brain cells. Isn't that incredible? Just being grateful will remap the connection of the brain cells. It will literally reform our subconscious mind. And you know, people often say to me, oh, I've carried these beliefs, these false ideas in my subconscious mind for years. I just don't know what to, this is what to do about that. Gratitude is the way to clean out your subconscious mind. And I know not everything in our world or in our personal life is the way we want it to be. But here we are, we are in the promised land, and we have so much to be grateful for. How it gets better, how we get healthier, how we get happier is to practice. So, you know, one of the things I do, and, and I offer this as a suggestion, I just get these little blank books like this, and I do a little bit of uh, gratitude, like a page, so a page holds about 15 things, and I'll do this at night before I go to bed. I have found that this takes about two minutes, it happens so fast, and I just say, thank you God for, thank you God for my health, thank you God for uh, living in in a wonderful place. Thank you, God, for my church community. Thank you, God, for my dog who always makes me smile. Thank you know, and just these are not um, Herculean things. This is just the 
But the point is, when you're grateful, the universe gives you more to be grateful for. The other side of that principle, I think, is also equally as interesting, and it's this, that what you take for granted will diminish. Oh, I hate that part. That's just, but I think that's the principle. I really do. What you're grateful for increases, but what you take for granted diminishes. How often have we had people, friends in our life, who said, oh, I wish I appreciated my health when I had it. Or, oh, I wish I appreciated so-and-so while they were still here on Earth with us. So we know. We know this is true. So it's not that hard to do. I am confident as I look out here today, and I know many people are watching us virtually, and I see you too, that you know we can do this. So a little notebook, a little out loud, what I am grateful for, and the universe will give you more to be grateful for. I believe, honestly, if we could be grateful for 24 hours, constantly, every breath, every thought, grateful for 24 hours, we would become enlightened at the end of 24 hours. I have not made it nearly that long. I'm not even close. I, I, I get a few minutes of really great gratitude, and then my mind goes off on something else. But that's OK. I'm willing. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Maybe I can get up to an hour before uh, I leave Earth someday, you know, a whole hour of nothing but gratitude. So that's what, really what I want to share with us this week, that when we practice gratitude, we change us from the inside out, and that can only be a good thing. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now this morning, together recognizing that right here where we are, the fullness, the allness of God, God's infinite loving spirit is right here. And we are one with that presence, that power, that principle. It's the most true and real thing about each and every one of us. So in this awareness of our connection with the infinite mind, I speak the word that we are grateful, grateful, grateful people. That we find something to be grateful for every day and in every moment. And in some of those moments, I know it's just an opportunity to practice, and we do. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, loved ones near and dear. And we know that right where they are, they are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. It is a spirit of life, a spirit of abundance, a spirit of creativity and joy. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So emanating out from our consciousness and our heart is an energy of love and peace and healing and abundance that we send out to all people everywhere. Because we're connected on the unseen side of life, I know everyone gets lifted up. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together, that everyone gets raised up. And so with a full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.